So hip hop and dancing was something that was in my family and in my culture. So as a Romanian gypsy in our families, every party you dance, it's a standard. So you dance with your aunties, your mom, sister, it's a party, you just dance, it's a social thing. Is there any specific like kind of dance? In it, yes, yes, so, so we've got Roma dance, so you dance together. Um, right. So there isn't like salsa or bachata. It, there was like a certain gypsy style that we use. Right. Don't know if it has a name, but there is a style. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? There is a style. Um, and it's all about family. It's all about togetherness. It's all about sharing. So dancing to me was something I was brought up with all my life. So to me, dancing was standard. Then my brother and my sister used to listen to a lot of hip hop, a lot of rap music. Mm. Uh, so I was just brought up with it and I was just every day listening to what they were listening to and everything. Um, and I remember Tupac uh, made a really big impact within that city. And I know some other cities had Biggie, uh, but Tupac, some of that stuck really big within my entire city. So everyone was really into Tupac. So when I was growing up, Tupac was like, yeah, that's really, really cool music. Um, and then one day we were watching MTV and MTV um, had a, a breaking crew called Flying Steps. And Flying Steps had become my like, dream team I wanted to work with I want to be like that I want to do what they do but we didn't have YouTube so we couldn't pause replay start again you literally had sit there for an hour in front of the telly hope the song comes on when it comes on you'll probably have seconds on each move that they're going to do to try and remember something so you can go outside and practice so I would literally just sit at that screen and be like oh you just done this and then you just run outside and try it and you hurt yourself and you do crazy stuff and you throw yourself around to do what they did and that was my beginnings of my breaking so I, I would then train um in the local park in the local street one of my friends had this big concrete slab outside his house we put a couple boxes on it tape them down we had a little stereo car battery we run it from that and that's how we started and I would literally dance every single day. There wouldn't be a day I didn't do it. It became my favorite sport. It became my favorite thing to do just every day. Didn't even think about it. It's just what I did. Like when you got to brush your teeth every morning, I would just dance every day. <laughs> that was my type of thing. Um, but then when we came to Britain, that's when it changed. That's when I took it a bit more serious. Because I met a couple of guys who were doing break-in and we were allowed to train in the dance studio. That was huge to have a space to be able to train and you can do better moves and, and learn things and stuff like that. That's when my kind of understanding and knowledge and everything started growing. And then I started researching and understanding there is a hip-hop culture. So you've got a hip-hop dance and a DJ and graffiti and all that cool stuff. But there is a culture element to it. And that's something that really inspired me because the culture was very close to my culture. Because if I'm from Germany and don't speak English, but as soon as I sound hip hop, we're brothers. Mm -hmm. So we become brothers. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I loved about the hip hop culture that kind of brought us together. That whole unity thing came instantly. So right now, me and my dancers, when we travel anywhere and we meet other hip hop people, we're just like family. Mm -hmm. So like your cousins coming down is that type of thing. And that's something I fall in love with in the hip hop culture. Yeah, that's wicked. It's very similar with martial arts. Yeah, you're relatively new to it still, but you'll find out when you travel, different cities, different countries, doesn't matter your language or anything. You go in and that that's a language in itself. Yes, yeah, movement because yeah, you, you did the same thing, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So there was a little bit of uh, a scene in Plymouth when you arrived. Um, no, there, there were there were a couple of boys just doing it. Okay. So there was a couple of boys in Lipson um, doing it. Um, so then you had Chris, you had Sammy, you had Borim, Salim. Um, so they were doing some stuff. So you had the popping and breaking. That was the two things they did. Mm -hmm. um, so the other boys, so, uh, Chris was from Plymouth. Then you had Sammy, uh, Borim, uh, Salim, and they did um, breaking and popping. And they were from uh, Kosovo, but they spoke German. And because I spoke German, I could communicate with them because I didn't speak English by then. How many languages do you talk? So I speak five. Five, five yeah. <laughs> I would love to learn another three, which is Italian, French, and Spanish. Wow. So three I would like to learn because they're very common uh, languages so what, around what the world. What five do you know? So Polish, English, German, uh, Roma, and Czech. What's Roma? Roma is our gypsy language. Mm. Is, that, is that a language? Yeah, Sorry, we've got our own language. Yeah, yeah, it is, cool. yeah. It's our own language, but the language is only passed on from parents to children, and it goes that way. So it's not written, it's okay. not in books. It's only passed on verbal. Is it similar to any other language? Uh, we have very, a lot of similarities to Indian, okay. uh, Punjab language. Yeah. So, so a lot of uh, terms are very close to Punjabi and Sliranka, oh, I can't pronounce that, Sliranka. 
um, language. So there's a lot of similarities in a lot of the language. So for history, when they um, look back where the Romney people come from, uh, the farthest back they could go at the minute on paper they have is India. So at the minute they presume our heritage originates from India 500 years ago. Yet now there's more people discovering more things, so there's more it's stuff always coming, be up. More coming it's out. There's always more, it? do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but more. this is just as far as they got back before. So now they're discovering a lot more things. Yeah. So yeah, so it's really cool, really interesting. I love languages, um, but all sorts of languages. So I did Makaton training, I did body language training, I did all sorts of things because it allowed me to do my job better. Mm. It allowed me to communicate better with people. And in dance, it's a language where you do not need to speak. Yeah. Yeah, is it language, I think, and communication in general. I think the actual words, verbalizing is such a small component of it. Body yeah. language is massive, tone, and then the words are really kind of a small component. Yes, definitely. So yeah, so, yeah that's cool. So you, you went from kind of back home, sort of uh, dancing in the streets to, to yes. Plymouth in a, in a bit of a studio. Yes. To eventually own in a studio. Yes. So tell us how that happened. So um, I was teaching in every single school in Plymouth, traveling from school to school, living a fantastic life. Uh, me and Maura have had um, a really good lifestyle. We were just working all the time, you know, did the start work together. So we met at TR2, Theatre Row. Uh, so I was the dancing teacher, she was the acting teacher. And then one day we just spoke together. And the first day we've met, she stood up for me. So what happened was I entered the, uh, the space and I turned up five minutes late to the meeting. And as soon as I turned up, everyone stared at me, but it wasn't a very nice stare. So my wife recognized that, that there was something odd. And then, so she gave um, everyone a certain look to say, that's not appropriate. She got up, gave me her seat. And in my culture, that was very weird. A woman giving you a seat because I'm very old fashioned, very old school. I'll give you a seat. And she went, well, you can come sit at Massey. And she was quite bossy. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll take oh, a seat. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. I won't say no, I'll take a seat. So I took a seat. After that, we had a couple of discussions and stuff. And I remember she told me a story where when we arrived uh, for the real sessions, um, she, she asked somebody, who is that? Oh, that's just Toby and his crew. So I wasn't very welcome there um, in so that do, space. Again, do, do you think that's because you were different, doing a different type of dancing, different ethnicities, anything It, it like was that, everything. You know? It was everything. Because if you imagine everyone in there was white middle class. Yeah, yeah. And I was to totally odd. I was <laughs> odd as hell in there, do you know what I mean? I was totally different. Um, and for my wife, it's the first time she had to kind of see it and experience it. And one of the things I love about my wife was that she was just a kind human being. She saw th something, so she did something, which for me, she still does to today, and I love that. She has this really strong moral and the principle of, if you see something, do something. If you feel something, do something. If you feel an emotion, there has to be an action. Like you see somebody homeless, you go, oh my God, that guy's homeless. Yet you go home and have a cup of tea. My wife had this principle of, no, if I felt something, I'm gonna do something. Otherwise, don't waste your time on those feelings. And she taught me that. We taught that to all our children and we live by that. So when we met together, we, um, I've got six kids. So Joe was pregnant right now with the twins. Uh, life is crazy. I drove past the old YMCA at top of town. And I seen it, I was like, wow, that's a cool building. So then I rang up, I said, can I come and have a look at it? Don't know why I did it, just did. I always, I'm always very cheeky and always take opportunities and always go with the flow. I seen the sign for rent and I was like, hmm. Because I was teaching in so many places, I thought, wouldn't it be easier if everyone just come to me? So then I walked into the building, this, this, this agent shows me around the building and I'm just falling in love with it. I'm just walking around going, wow just blown away by the building because I had a dance studio upstairs, had a huge space downstairs because it used to be the YMCA gym. So the building was just all set for me. All it just needed some graffiti to make it look really cool and dope. So when I walked in, I just fell in love with it. And then the guy says, yeah, well, we have to pay this much and that. And I was like, oh my God, we'll be able to afford this. So anyway, as we're walking out, the owner of the building turns up. And as he turns up, I'm saying bye to the agent. And he goes, oh, did you just have a look at the building? I said, yeah, I love the building. It's amazing. He said, oh, come with me. I'm like, mm, okay, I'm coming. See what's up. So we're walking around the building. He showed me again. He said, so what do you want to do here? I said, I want to run the school, um, you know, train kids, give kids an opportunity, uh, probably create some of the best answers. Just do something really cool. He was like, you know what? I like you. Gets his keys out. Gives me the whole keys. You're joking. Just Darren Den. What an amazing guy. Darren Den. Just, just uh, how, tell you what, how, how, weird, 
weird as went, like rent or <laughs> no dude nothing <laughs> just there and then he went there's the keys what? and I'm like so far as I'm a bit like shocked like he goes do you need to do the place up I said yeah I'm gonna have to do a bit of work here uh, he goes okay this is what you can pay me I said can we have some time to do the place up he said okay I'll give you six months <laughs> six months free rent so give me six months to do the place up and I mean literally I worked in that place so six weeks holidays that's where I spent my time mm -hmm. because downstairs they had carpet and we needed uh, vinyl flooring to be laid on on there. So we had to take the carpet up because it was that really rough, cheap carpet. So we had to t rip it off. And to rip it off, it was glued. It was not much glue. So we had to borrow this machine that's got like a big sort of sharp edge and like do, 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 and chop oh, really? right through. So we had to imagine, and the space was 30 meters long by four and a half meters wide. I understand your pain. I've, I've done a few, few retail so my places. Hands, <laughs> my hands were sore. But so one of my first kids I ever trained, Josh Rumbold, um, he was there with me and me and him just worked every day there. Me and him created this beautiful building. We had mirrors, graffiti boards, everything. The whole place just looked super dope. So we launched our first uh, studio uh, and that was just incredible.